I can't think of any reason why you should not buy this lens. This lockdown is not gonna last forever. We'll eventually end and we'll be able to go back to our regular lives. That means that I will be able to go back to film outdoors and you, you will be able to start vlogging. Are you prepared, equipped, motivated? Are you ready for it? Meaning, do you have a camera like the 90D or the M50? Do you have a mini tripod like the Jobby Gorilla Pod or the Manfrotto Pixie Mini? And do you have a microphone like the Rode Vito Micro? Yes? Well then, you just need one more thing to start creating awesome content and great vlogs. You need this. Oh, uh, no. Let's say you have all of this already, including the glasses, but these are not really important. If you want to take your vlogs to the next level, you need a wide lens. You need to get in frame as much as possible. Keep watching this video because I'm gonna show you the best lens for vlogging on a crop sensor camera. Just uh, after the intro. What's up guys, Dan Frulani here and welcome back to another episode. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and since you're there, smash the like button too. So we can jump immediately to the topic of today's video, which is a fantastic lens that was made popular by the king of vlogging, Casey Neistat. It's the Canon EFS 10 to 18 mm f 4.5 to 5.6, also known as the best lens for vlogging. First thing to say about this lens is really wide, it's 10 to 18 millimeters. So at 10 millimeters, it equals to a 16 millimeters on a full frame. So it's pretty wide. And the fact that it's so wide makes it wonderful for architecture, photography, and artistic photos in general. It distorts quite a bit, open wide at 10 millimeters, but that's how you get like more artistic shots. It depends on how you use it with your camera. The distortion is something you can use in your favor to create a very shots. I talked about this lens quite a bit in many different videos, check them out when you get the chance, and today I wanted to try it in a different way. You know, I was thinking, I tested this lens like out in the street, in the sunlight, and it's great with both the Canon M50 and the 90D. I tested it in the studio with studio lights, and it's awesome, it's fantastic. When you go vlogging, sometimes you wanna keep a low profile, or if you go to somebody's house, or you go to a wedding and you're not the designated filmmaker or photographer, it's not nice. It doesn't really look nice if you bring with you a huge set of things and gear. So you wanna keep a low profile and make things do with a minimal setup. So let's say you carry with you the um, Canon M50 or the Canon 90D on a Jobby Gorilla Pod or on a Manfrotto Pixie Mini with the Rode Vita Micro. And let's say you're in a um, indoor situation without any professional lights. How will this lens perform? So we're about to find out because right now I'm going to test it both here, which is not outdoors, it's just a covered terrace or something, whatever you call it. And indoors without using my professional lights. Like in a uh, real world vlog situation, using both the Canon M50 and the Canon 90D. Let's see how it goes. So this is the 10 to 18 millimeters with the Canon 90D and the Rode Video Micro on the Jobby Gorilla Pod 5K. And you would say, but hey, it's not wide at all. Wait, wait a minute. Now it's at 18 millimeters and the uh, maximum aperture is f5.6. Oh, I'm gonna open. The aperture when you open it at 15 millimeters it can be opened up to 5.0 and if you open it more it goes down to f4.5. Look at it all the way at 10 millimeters now. This is it. What do you think? Is it wide enough? And the sound might be not as good as it was before because this microphone, the Rode Vita Micro, it's 
wonderful, it's great. Or let's say it's much better outdoors. So I'm going to pick it up and stabilization off now. Let me set this Jumpy Gorilla Pod the way it should be by bending the legs. Pretty easy. This is it. Stabilization off. And let me see. I hope I don't fall. And walk. I mean, it's so wide that when you shoot with such a wide lens, uh, stabilization is never really a big problem. Not an issue. But let's put it on to see if there is any difference. As you can see, everything's in. Everything is in focus. It's because of the aperture, which even wide open, it's at 4.5. So it's very difficult to get a blurry background. But that's not the point. That's not why you may want to want this lens. This is more like for vlogging, meaning that when you walk around and indoors or outdoors and you want to show things, People can see you and everything in the background because that's what you're supposed to, to, to show, to tell your story. Let's walk inside and see what changes. And now I'm inside and I'm still holding the Jobby Gorilla Pod with the Canon 90D and 10 to 18 millimeters. But now, even though I'm in front of the window, the sun is not hitting the, the window like directly. So there is some diffuse light, but I had to bump up the ISO to 800. Let's see. I think I'm getting like a correct exposure. Stabilization on. So this is it, inside, near the window. Now I'll just put the Jobby Gorilla Pod on the table. The window is not far away, but the light is not entering probably, and I have no professional lights. So I had to bump up the ISO to 1000, and this is what it looks like, and what it sounds like with the Rode Vito Micro on the top. kitchen the situation improves because there is a huge window and the light even though the sun doesn't hit it directly uh, the light enters and I think it looks pretty good right now ISO 200 at 18 millimeters at 5.6 and now 10 millimeters is my kingdom actually is my office I do pretty much everything in here including working out because I have a gym here with ISO 1600 the Sun is coming from outside 
not hitting directly that's why there isn't much light <laughs> Canon 10 to 18 millimeters is a fantastic lens, especially if you're a vlogger. And in this video, as I said, I just wanted to show you the results you will get if you happen to vlog like indoors and you don't have any light at all, but still it's daytime, so there's no artificial light at all. But if you check out my other videos, you will see that outdoors is fantastic. In studio is astonishing. Even when I don't do vlogging, I carry this lens always with me most of the times. Because like if I, for example, if I can't fly the drone to shoot an establishing shot, I just use this with or without the gimbal. Being so wide, it's very easy to get some wide stable footage. And also it, it's very sharp. I can't think of any reason why you should not buy this lens. Oh, last thing, the price. Well, I didn't believe it. It's something like in between 250, 300 bucks. Check the links in the description. And is it worth it? Yes, definitely. Negative things, mm, I can't find any. Just maybe you don't get a bokeh, like the um, shallow depth of field or blurry background. Uh, because of its aperture, it's really difficult to get a shallow depth of field. Only for example, when you film an object from very close, this can focus from 0.7 feet. And then, yeah, you might get some blurry background when you shoot like macro with this, even though this is not a macro lens per se, but it gets the job done. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.